Damn, I was doing research on Chadwick Boseman last night and his cancer. Uh-huh. He had, oh, uh, what was it? Not pancreatic. Black colon pancreatic. cancer. <laughs> I tried to make a Black Panther joke, but it just turned into Black pancreatic. Didn't really work. Yeah, and he had it while he was filming Black Panther too. I was like, dude. So Black Panther has cancer. <laughs> that sucks. And no one knew. Yeah, shout out, dude. No one knew that Norm Macdonald had cancer either. Did he? He's a little more white. Yeah. It's not like I watched Norm Macdonald while he was alive, but... He didn't tell anyone? What kind of cancer no. did he have? I'm not sure. <laughs> Steve Jobs what, what you, pancreatic cancer. Did you learn anything fun about it? I try not to read too much about it because it scares Why? me. Why? right dude yeah like, I'm just like, I see oh, some, like so these are the symptoms what i, I kind of feel dude, that i i see i because I, I, it was something i think it was maybe some science stuff about cancer but like even like i said like the content you intake you know kind of projects in your life sometimes and so like I, if i'm reading something about cancer i'm like ah oh, dude i don't know if i want my brain thinking about this yeah and then i read like the, <laughs> when you have pancreatic cancer you usually don't have symptoms until it's too late I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> no, I feel great. What's, what's going on? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I, I laughed myself into a cramp. Are you sure it's not? Hey, JK. <laughs> JK. There is a wrestler who died. Uh, I think he had something with his lung. Uh, but, like, he didn't have any symptoms. And then two weeks later, it showed up, and it just progressed, and he died, like, a month later. I think so there's some, some long stuff. It sucks when it's like so fast. Sure. Fuck. You're just like literally you're I mean, r- running it? a marathon and then. But like, it, it like, because my grandfather on my mother's side had, he like might have had some cancer or something. He did something in like some Mexican city to get his teeth done and it, it might have caused something bad in his throat. Oh, but God. like throughout, but like he lived a long ways after that, right? So a painful life. Yeah, it, it was not painful, and he didn't have cancer. But it was just, you know, as as he grew in time, it just became less fun. He had a uh, like stomach stuff and stuff, and you know, like human aging things and disease things. So That's something like, fast oh. might not be. I don't know. Youth is priceless. Health is priceless. Health is priceless. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Health is it, literally that phrase. Health is priceless. Wink. Jeff Bezos looking into aging things. Oh um, yeah, how he is paying people a million dollars a year to study that. Probably more than that. But uh, you know, a big industry where you say youth is is wealth, but youth could be found out in aging, which is something about health. I'm going towards. So what's his goal here? I don't know, but I'm going to look at it. I've been, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Uh, Cause that doesn't sound super fun. Yeah. Like maybe like tack on like an extra 50, maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah. As long as it's not like painful. Yeah. Yeah. But even it's just, it sounds a little, Cause you still gotta like i guess if you have money but like the world i mean this is why people may be looking at mars and other things but maybe people have already thought about hey we're tacking on 50 years the earth we live on is already devoid of soil and things and and meat we're making is making the earth not very fun to live on with gases and we're kind of going through the resources that we use as a level 0.5 society and then you have spacex maybe maybe dying is fun maybe we're just maybe it's that's part of it <laughs> like i imagine i imagine like when i go to the dentist and they put me under i imagine that's what dying is just the best sleep i've ever had i don't know i haven't been there yet unless it's just remember. like hell eternity of holy fire what if we're like we're so far from the correct religion that <laughs> what if it's just some fucking weird ass religion in africa or they like South, worship rocks or something South, and that's the right one south park already had the bit Fuck. another bit yeah have you seen that one youtube channel that does short youtube shorts and their their titles are like 
kind of funny and then they have the movie title or the short title no once you click one of them they show up might be called like something it's a weird channel name i want to say burger but it's not burger but it's something like that salon i don't know um but they they also had that bit in the short they did where a guy is dead and in the afterlife he's just in the forest I love how all these good movies though good movies okay Chris on the feature for a, a deep in dive for a 30 minute Netflix AI dive yeah I, I gotta get him on here he's, a, okay. he's an interesting he's an interesting guy I love all these YouTubers are scrambling to make squid game content right now yeah they are literally just yeah I, I'm interested in how that came into the, the populace when was the last Netflix thing that had mind share <sighs> After Stranger Things, I'm sure. There's something else, I'm sure. Oh, uh, what was that chest movie? Chest show. A lot of people were on it. Gambit? Queen's Gambit? Yeah. I is that like Netflix? That was a thing for a little bit. Okay. I haven't yeah, seen that I'm either. In, I'm interested if, if it's quite organic or half organic or what. Yeah, I'm fucking... Dude, do they just like slip all these YouTubers a check and be like, watch this, make something about it? Maybe maybe what they do is is there's good organic views of it, and then they start the marketing just like they see they they put out the album and then make the music video for the the good single after. Thirteen types of people in Squid Game, eight point four million views. Just go ahead and watch two videos about the fifteen minute uh, spoilers. It's pretty cool. This guy also has five million subscribers, so I'm sure that helped. Just like Sheeb, you're at the top. You might squeeze a little bit out, but sheep. you're at the top. Sheep! Oh, sheep, dude. My beloved sheep. Yeah. I love sheep. The, uh, yeah. The, the crash, the crash risk is interesting for that. But like I said, maybe sheep was big enough where you wait a little bit and Bitcoin pumps where you're, you're free of a crash. Yeah. My whole thing with sheep was like during the last crash, I was like, dude, I mean, still over a billion dollar market cap so and it's kind of chilling here so it's a lot of money it probably won't go like all the way down you know all the money fucking jesus christ and the fucking youtube views on this three hours Sheep. ago eight thousand views one hour ago five thousand views six hours ago forty thousand views and by the way people crypto crypto as as if i'm understanding this correctly Crypto videos have a very high CPM on YouTube, so you don't need a lot of views to make a lot of money. Can you explain what CPM is? CPM is cost per mil, that's what it stands for, and that's how much money you make for every thousand views. So how it works is advertisers pay different amounts of money based on the type of video, So because they know who's watching. So a kid watching a fucking Squid Game video probably doesn't have any money to like spend on stuff so an advertiser is not going to pay as much to put a product in front of a, a 45 year old man with a job who's watching like a video about insurance so the cpm could probably for like an insurance video i've seen them go as high as like 50 dollars, 50 dollars per thousand views and then you look at like a jake paul vlog and it'll have like a five dollar cpm right on yeah so that's basically it so someone like Graham Stephan, I think he might be one of the biggest finance people on YouTube, making stupid money because he gets millions of views and all of his videos are about finance. So he's probably going crazy on YouTube. Probably over a hundred grand a month. Internet money. Just from YouTube. <clears throat> Just from YouTube. I'm sure he sells a course too because why not? Got to. Have to. Have to sell the course. Age of course. Just, just repackage your YouTube videos, which are already free. <laughs> Throw them behind a paywall. Yeah. And then. Get a little more premium. A little a little more tool. A little more premium. Add but a quiz in there and a fixed certificate. Boom. 500 bucks. Freemium model. Give out all your things for free. Someone will buy it. And you give even more value over deliver from there. But that's a, that's a model I like crazy youtube crazy but don't give away your edge you know i read something that youtube is expected to pay i forget the figure but this year and next year the next couple of years youtube is expected to pay like 
a shit ton of money because all the advertising money is moving to YouTube. Like, companies are like, yeah, like, why even pay for anything else when everybody's just on here? It's been around for fucking 15 years. TikTok, thinking, Vine, Vimeo, all those come and go, but YouTube's still here. It is. still kind of around. It is. A little more art niche Yeah. I don't know. We haven't talked since Instagram went down. Oh, yeah. What was up with that? Sketchy. <laughs> yeah. Six hours down and some email DNS records deleted. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I, I already expect to not trust Mark on anything, so. Why? I'm, I'm trying to figure out as, as well the real reason government doesn't like Facebook. Do you have, do you have a, a hypothesis? The real reason? Yeah. What's the, what's the, what's the reason we have now <laughs> that we've been marketed? Well, the last, the last big thing that comes to mind was the Cambridge Analytica scandal. What was that? Fuck, I don't want to fuck it up. From what you remember? Damn, it was something about like the Trump administration and then there was like, I think they were... Before that maybe, I think. Fuck, I don't know. I think they were like, people were like signing up for something on Facebook and then like Cambridge Analytica was like tracking them like across like other sites and then all that information got like leaked to the public. In the 2010s, personal data belonging to millions of Facebook users was collected without their consent by British consulting firm Cambridge Analytica predominantly to be used for political advertising. Oh, they also don't like Facebook because they're like, yo, you're too big. Maybe they don't want user data to be given to not America. That's a thing too. I'm, I might be landing on that, that argument for now. But also they're like, yo, like you got to break up WhatsApp and Instagram because like they'd still be giant companies this guy was like i forgot i don't know some senator was like so so if somebody doesn't like facebook the platform where would they go like who who's the who's the competitor yeah and mark zuckerberg was like uh <laughs> i don't know you you, you got it you got to know that your counterpoints off top man you yeah. got to know what someone will say <laughs> fucking uh, clubhouse <laughs> You could have said Clubhouse, whatever said the Twitter. Pop in, I don't know. The pop in, I mean, that's what they did. <laughs> but Twitter's not the same, like, at all. Like, but it's where they went. Fucking. Yeah. But I was, I was thinking of uh, how blockchain tech will disrupt advertising. And I was thinking of YouTube in that way. And I was thinking of, you know, direct to consumer stuff. I kind of lost my train of thought, but just in general. Uh, the uh, you have media that's kind of centralized now um, even more so than what it was when it was just two channels on a TV and radio super centralized how will blockchain affect YouTube I had an idea a couple of seconds ago um, but I forgot it well less centralized maybe you have Maybe there's an option. Let's say Mr. Beast is like, yo, if you want, you can buy this video. You can own it for like 50 ETH or whatever. And then you buy it on YouTube and then all the ad money that the video gets, the person just gets because they own it. And then it said this video is owned yeah. by so-and-so. That's definitely something where you might have partial ownership. But I'm thinking that these websites that everything goes on um, that has a lot of data will instead be elsewhere either on personal sites or basically people monetizing their own data instead of other companies monetizing it or you can leverage what you watch in your advertisers um the brave software kind of does that okay but because it yeah go where are all these videos going to be stored then people have other sites maybe you still have a central site Maybe like, it's just YouTube. Like Maybe. what server? Like, cause like, no, no, no person, no man, woman, or child has server money like YouTube. That's like a huge thing. Space to hold data. That's the leverage, isn't it? That's the thing, dude. That's the fucking. That's the leverage. So unless data becomes so small, that, and we're kind of getting there. 
but still yeah. I think that might be a little uh, a tech revolution as the next big one happens in, in microchips and other things yeah and you kind of had a solution for that um did, did you ever come across uh i forget the name it's it's adjacent to like a plant and it used other people's computer space to store things uh and it was a crypto token uh, and it was really big and it was like 300 uh, and you could mine it and it was kind of like a plant but whatever mm -hmm. it was it uh allowed you to basically rent out your computer space or a computer space to other people uh digitally and it was a uh, proof of proof of space they called it proof of space yes sir damn uh, that's a new one it was it was a cool thing huh? <laughs> it's a cool name chia you ever heard of chia i've never heard of chia it was kind of like the token that people could mine that isn't uh bitcoin uh but i'm pretty sure it took a big old dump recently and it's also not on many exchanges which is interesting it went from 300 uh <laughs> it only has three months worth of data on trading view it went from 300 to 169. damn proof of space is a type of consensus algorithm achieved by demonstrating one's legitimate interest in a surface by allocating a non-trivial amount of memory or disk space to solve a challenge presented by the service provider. The concept was formulated in 2013 by Zimbiowski et al. and by Atenese et al. So, Chia. Ch -ch -ch Chia. I saw this. Yeah. This coin thing, I guess it was a coin. I guess the tech is called FNFT. And if I understand correctly, it's an NFT that locks or something. And you can like put a will in there and then like Dude, you set a date and really it unlocks. That's, I, one thing I've been thinking about is and, and blockchain and, and ancestry record keeping mm -hmm. or just like note keeping and stuff it's a really good idea if i don't do it then i didn't do it fast enough but here we go uh you have momentum uh, mementos of ancestors and, and people and photos and stuff where you keep it on the blockchain uh and you can see your family timeline do things like that damn yeah and then you just know she is my mother 